What's going on, guys? Uh, part, what is this now? Uh, 13? Maybe. Um, left, last time we left off with the uh, collision working and doing damage. However, we did not um, get our, um, our health working properly because this collision is called every single frame, and we don't want that. So instead, what we're going to do is add in a new um, property to our enemy. We'll call it public. Um, a new public float. We'll call it uh, ROF. It equals. Um, we'll do one. Okay. Um, so actually, now I think about it, there's several different ways. I like to, even if we're not going to implement all of them, I like to at least bring them up so I can talk about them um, in these videos here. So the way I'm thinking about implementing it is only do the damage a certain amount of time. So if you stay in collision, um, it'll only do this, this damage once per second, or the ROF. Um, another way that people will usually do it is once you get hit, the enemy will change direction and th therefore disable the collision and then the next time you can collision it it works again um, however I don't really like that I kinda like um, like how it is however maybe maybe turning our speed around would be kinda cool so we'll, t we'll at least do that we'll do speed equals negative speed so our, pl our dude will now turn around if we hit him um, but above here we want to do if um, last hit minus time dot er switch that around actually if time dot time minus last hit is greater than or equal to rof return or uh rather less than rof return else we'll put last hit equals time dot time. Now, I don't know if you just heard me, I said else. Now, the reason all of this is considered an else, even though there is no else statement, is because in this if statement, it's return. So if this returns false, all of this is going to get called either way, because this is it's returning otherwise. So that's why I just said else. Now, you'll notice I used a few new things here. Um, time dot time is a, uh, a unity thing where it gives us the time since the start of the level. So one second after the level's been loaded, time dot time is one, four seconds it's four, um, and so on and so forth. You notice I also have this new last hit variable. We're gonna make that private. Private float last oops, I can spell. Last hit equals zero. And now you're seeing every time uh, we hit this this player we're setting the last hit to our updated time, so it'll reset the check. Basically, what this logic means is that um, every time we hit something, update the last hit, so we can't hit it until um, it's been a second past our last hit. Then once it's been a second past, reset the last hit to our time now, reverse our speed, and do the damage to the player. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save. One thing I want to do is in our player camera script this is it's not that important it's just you know for whatever if player does not equal no this is just saying if the player is still there because if our player is destroyed um, you might have seen in I think it was the last video like if our player got destroyed a bunch of error messages came up this is just why because it was referencing a player that was been destroyed so now it will only do this function this method if uh, the player is still alive basically Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a go. Um, okay. Really, I should be turning off my spawner here. Okay, so that's one, and he turns around. Oh, that's three. Okay. Later on, we're going to have to do some, uh, do some enemy on enemy AI. So, like, if they hit each other, what should they do? Actually, I have an idea. We can do that right now. Well, for the sake of keeping this tutorial short, we're going to. Uh, we're not going to do that actually. Okay. Um, so there we go. We've implemented that. I just want to keep this one short because the last one was really long. So this is sort of making it up. So I'll see you guys next time.